Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. So in this session of physics, we shall discuss the part 2 of motion. So moving on to the part 2 of motion topic. So we have seen some of the concepts of motion in the part 1. Now we shall see some more concepts of motion in the part 2. So first is inertia. Generally what comes into your mind when I say inertia? Right, so we shall see what is inertia actually. So inertia is nothing but is a property of body by virtue of which it cannot change its position. Suppose I am at rest now. So I can't change this position to motion. So this is called inertia. Right. Suppose I am moving. Now I can't change my position to rest. This is called inertia of motion. The first is inertia of rest. The next is inertia of motion. So it depends on the mass of the body. Right. Clear with this? Higher the mass, higher the inertia, lesser the mass, lesser the inertia. So inertia is always proportional to mass of a body. Clear about this concept? Right. So next concept of motion is momentum. Actually what comes into your mind you will say mass into velocity is nothing but momentum. But what is ma actual definition of momentum? So momentum is nothing but it is a quantity of motion that an object has. Okay, so it is a quantity of motion that an object has. So it is nothing but it is a product of mass and velocity m into v. Okay, so momentum is product of mass into velocity. The third concept in the motion topic is impulse. So what do you mean by impulse? Impulse is nothing but change in momentum is impulse. Okay, so if I change from one momentum to another moment that is mv2 minus mv1, it is nothing but it is an impulse. Okay, Ch example you can say that is change in velocity will lead into impulse. Right, so moving on took the causes of motion. How motion is caused? Generally, if I want to move from one place to another, from A to B, I want to move, so there must be some external force applied on me or there must be an internal force within me so that it will make me move from A to B. So first, what are the causes of motion? So any force which is either internal or external, we need a force to move from one place to another okay so what is actually force force is nothing but it is a push or pull upon an object resulting from the object's interaction with another object okay so whenever there is an interaction only there will be a force suppose an object a is hitting an object b so this is called force and because there is an interaction there is a force right so if there is no interaction there is no force clear with this so forces exist only because of interaction between either two or more bodies minimum two bodies must exist because of force so force is a vector quantity remember force is a vector quantity because it has a direction and it is a product of mass and acceleration as explained in Newton's second law of motion okay Newton's second law of motion says Force is nothing but it is a product of mass of the body and the acceleration which it makes. So what is the unit of force here? It is nothing but 1 Newton. 1 Newton is equals to 1 kg meter per second square because mass into acceleration. Okay, 1 Newton is 1 kg meter per second square. So this is about force. Then what are the types of forces generally we are, which are available? So first is contact forces. Contact forces means suppose there is a body A. So suppose I am applying a force B. So these are touching here, right? So these are contact forces. Okay, some forces which doesn't touch like gravity. Those are called non-contact forces. We shall see in the next uh, slide. First we shall see what are contact forces. So first contact forces which have a contact so these are some of the contact forces, frictional force. Suppose I am walking on a floor. Okay. So I have placed my shoe here. So there must be a contact between the floor and the shoe. Then only there will be a frictional force. Right. Centripetal force. When I am traveling in a circle, centrifugal force is also when I am traveling in a circle. Right. Tension force. Which one is uh, 
uh, increasing the length of a body normal force which will be acting suppose the uh, my weighting is pulling me downward and a normal force will be acting upward right air resistance force sometimes i'm moving in uh, in a car the air resistance force called drag which will be dragging me backward applied force spring force all these are contact forces they need a contact to establish a force right then what are the other forces which are non contact forces these are called non contact forces okay so what are the examples gravitational force so now you are there on the earth right now even though you are in suppose you are there on the earth you are touching the earth surface suppose you are in this suppose this is the earth right suppose you are standing on the earth you are touching the earth suppose you are in the, in the atmosphere but you are even though pulled by the gravity of the earth even though you are not touching the earth so these are non contact forces electrical force at a some distance they will be acting magnetic force so all these are non contact forces without any contact they can establish a force at to up to some distances right so these are some of the types of forces next there are some more types of forces in the contact forces we have already seen what is the centripetal force and what is the centrifugal force now we shall study about them in detail so for a body to move in circle there must be a force which is directed towards the center suppose a body a is moving in circle in the anti clockwise direction so it first it must maintain in the circle right it, it has to be in the circle so or else it may be falling away from the circle so this force is called as centripetal force which is pulling the object a towards its center right and it is necessary to produce continuous change of direction in circular motion right so when i'm moving here it will be like this when i'm here it will be like this right so continuous change of direction will be changing take place and centripetal force will always drag towards the center right and what is the opposite one what is the example of centripetal force a stone tied at one end of a spring is whirled in a circle the pull in the string provides centripetal force suppose if i tie a stone here suppose now i am catching this stone so i am willing in a circle so it will maintain in the circle when the centripetal force is pulling it right so in the case of moon the gravitational force between earth and moon acts as centripetal force right so gravitation suppose there is earth we have moon so how moon is maintaining a specific object around the earth because of the centripetal force that is pulling the moon towards the earth right this is the gravitational force of the earth which is pulling towards the earth the moon will be pulled by the earth towards the moon but does it fall no so when the forces are in equilibrium suppose one force is pulling to one side another force is in pulling to other side then it will be in equilibrium state does earth fall from its orbit no does moon fall from its orbit no centripetal force will be pulling towards the center and centrifugal force will be pulling away from the center so that the body will maintain equilibrium okay so centripetal force will be acting towards the center and centrifugal force will act away from the center hope you are clear with this diagram then the body will make a perfect circle same like earth moon and other planets okay because of the centripetal force pulling towards the center and centrifugal force here the centripetal force is gravitational force centrifugal force is a normal force which is pulling outside because it is rotating in a circle okay then they will maintain the perfect orbits okay clear with this next types of other forces gravitational force we are all the aware of the force which pulls us towards the earth right this is the gravitational force it exists in all bodies whichever have mass they have gravitational force don't think earth has only gravitational force it exists between all 
bodies right next we will study about the important law of gravitation what is that newton's law of gravitation so what is this newton law of gravitation so suppose there is a body a and there is a body b so it states that any two objects exert a gravitational force of attraction on each other so one will be pulled by two in equal way two will be pulled by one okay so gravitational force exists between two objects and the direction of force will be along the line joining these objects see two will be pulling the one and one second object will be pulling the first object clear and first object will also be pulling the second object and the direction of force will be on the line joining of these objects okay so what is how much is this force the magnitude of this force is proportional to the product of gravitational masses and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them so mass 1 into mass 2 by square of distance suppose the, the distance is r so product of masses by square of the distance between them suppose if i remove this proportionality constant m1 into m2 by r square so how much is the value of this g g is called universal gravitational constant and it is equals to 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 newton per meter square per kg square how do you get this f is newton r square is meter square so m1 m2 that is kg square will go down okay newton meter square per kg square you have to remember this value and hope you are clear with this gravitation okay while newton was sitting on a rapid tree he was he has discovered this gravitation right hope you remember this right so moving on to weight so weight of the body is a force with which the earth attracts towards towards it any body right so weight is equal to mg mass into acceleration due to gravity generally g is nothing but 9.8 meter per second square right we have seen so what is mass mass is a measure of quantity of matter contained in it it remains constant very important mass is remains constant always weight changes as per g value so weight is equals to m into g this is on earth what is on moon weight equal to m g by 6 this is on moon suppose i am weighing 60 i will be 10 kgs 120 kgs i will be 60 kgs sorry 20 kgs on moon clear with this right so mass will remain same weight will change as per the g value because different objects will have different g value you can ask me a question sir how does g value will be so higher the mass sorry generally higher the mass higher will be g value lower the mass lower will be the g value because moon size is lower than the earth it has lower g that is g by 6 that is one sixth of g and earth has higher g sorry higher mass so it has higher g clear with this and weight of body is maximum at poles and minimum at the equator why because i've already told you in geography earth has a shape called the shape of the earth geoid what generally is not totally sphere right so it has it is flat at the poles right both at north pole and south pole and it is bulged at the equator so as distance from center increases as distance from center increases g value will be minimum right so poles g value will be high and at equator g value will be low so as g value is high so weight will be high at poles and uh, g value is low at equator so weight will be low at equator and center because it is pulling so center the weight will be zero at the earth's center here the weight will be zero obviously right so weight of a body is also less at elevations than at earth's surface obviously because as i move move away from the center of the earth weight will also decrease the weight at shimla will be less than chennai because shimla is more uh, 
at a higher altitude than Chennai from the mean sea level. On the surface of the moon, we already discussed G value is 1 by 6. So, 1 would weigh 1 by 6 on the moon than that of the earth. So, hope you are clear with this topic. Next, Newton's law of motion. Right. So, the body remains in rest. So, this is the first law of motion. Right. So, first, what is the first law of motion? We have already discussed. The first law says about inertia. What is inertia? Inertia is nothing but the property, the virtue of its property, it will not change. Suppose I am in rest, I will not change my position to move. Suppose if I am in motion, I am moving from one place to another, I will not come exactly uh, to rest. Right. Suppose I am sitting in a bus. Suddenly the driver has started this. So we will take a jump. Yes or no? This is due to the inertia of rest. Right? This is a very best example. So the first law of motion is related to inertia. It is a property of body by virtue of which the body resists the external force. Either from rest to motion or motion to rest. Okay. I will not change my position as soon as possible. This is because of inertia. Okay, so common examples of the passengers fall forward. I've already told you when the bus suddenly stops. Suppose if the bus suddenly stops, I'm in motion now. So suddenly I'll not come to rest. So that's why I'll fall forward. Right. And suppose uh, the bus starts suddenly, I will fall backward. Right. I'm resisting the force. Right. So dust particles get removed when we shake the carpet. Yes, because the dust particles are rest. They doesn't want to move faster right when the person jumps from the moving bus he runs through some distance to get into rest obviously if this we should not uh, jump from the moving bus this is harmful but when the person jumps he will take some distance to get stopped because of inertia of motion this is about the newton's first law of motion moving on to second newton's second law of motion so according to the newton's second law of motion the rate of momentum is change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied and it acts in the direction of force right rate of change of momentum means momentum is m into v right rate means we have to divide it by time okay so force is directly proportional to m into a that is mass into acceleration right clear with this so, F equal to MA is given by the Newton's second law of motion. Moving on, for constant force, acceleration produced in the body is inversely proportional to the mass of the body. Because all, obviously, F equal to MA, M is inversely proportional to acceleration. Larger mass, lesser is acceleration. Lesser mass, higher is the acceleration. So, for equal masses, the acceleration is directly proportional to the force applied larger is the force higher is the acceleration for equal masses okay clear with this moving on to newton's third law most of you know for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction which is directly proportional to the force applied larger is the force higher is the acceleration so this is used generally in rockets right so when i give a thrust more i will get higher thrust you can see in swimming pool right when I go to the bottom, if I push the floor of the swimming pool more, I will get an upward thrust, the higher acceleration. Okay. So common examples of Newton's third law of motion. When a person jumps from a board, the board will move, move backward. Okay. Bullet is fired, the gun goes backwards. Huge amount of smoke downward pushes the rocket upwards when a balloon is blown the air rushes outward while the balloon moves backward with the same momentum hope we have seen the first explains inertia the newton's first law second explains force is equal to ma that is mass into acceleration and third is for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction and we have seen the examples so hope you are clear with this topic part 2 of motion we shall meet in the next sessions thank you so much